Welcome back to History Highlights with Lane. In this video, my son will highlight the Tuskegee Study. The Tuskegee Study of Untreated Syphilis in the Negro Male, informally referred to as the Tuskegee Experiment or Tuskegee Syphilis Study, was a study conducted between 1932 and 1972 by the United States Public Health Service and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on a group of nearly 400 African Americans with syphilis. The purpose of the study was to observe the effects of the disease when untreated, though by the end of the study, medical advancements meant it was entirely treatable. The men were not informed of the nature of the experiment and more than 100 died as a result. The Public Health Service started the study in 1932 in collaboration with Tuskegee University, then known as Tuskegee Institute, a historically black college in Alabama. In the study, investigators enrolled a total of 600 impoverished African-American sharecroppers from Macon County, Alabama. Of these men, 399 had latent syphilis, with a control group of 201 men who were not infected. As an incentive for participation in the study, the men were promised free medical care, while the men were provided with both medical and mental care that they otherwise would not have received. They were deceived by the PHS, who never informed them of their syphilis diagnosis and provided disguised placebos, ineffective methods, and diagnostic procedures as treatment for bad blood. The men were initially told that the experiment was only going to last six months, but it was extended to 40 years. After funding for the treatment was lost, the study was continued without informing the men that they would never be treated. None of the infected men were treated with penicillin, despite the fact that by 1947, the antibiotic was widely available and had become the standard treatment for syphilis. The study continued under numerous public health service supervisors until 1972, when a leak to the press resulted in its termination on November 16th of that year. By then, 28 patients had died directly from syphilis, 100 died from complications related to syphilis, 40 of the patients' wives were infected with syphilis, and 19 children were born with congenital syphilis. The 40-year Tuskegee study was a major violation of ethical standards and has been cited as arguably the most infamous biomedical research study in the U.S. history. Its revelation led to the 1979 Belmont Report and to the establishment of the Office for Human Research Protection and federal laws and regulations requiring institutional review boards for the protection of human subjects and studies. The OHRP manages this responsibility within the United States Department of Health and Human Services. Its revelation has also been an important cause of the distrust in medical science and the U.S. government amongst African Americans. On May 16, 1997, President Bill Clinton formally apologized on behalf of the United States to victims of the study, calling it shameful and racist. He said, quote, What was done cannot be undone, but we can end the silence. We can stop turning our heads away. We can look at you in the eye and finally say, on behalf of the American people, what the United States government did was shameful and I am sorry, unquote. In 1928, the Oslo study of untreated syphilis had reported that the pathologic manifestations of untreated syphilis in several hundred white males. This study was a retrospective study since investigators pieced together information from the histories of patients who had already contracted syphilis but remained untreated for some time. The U.S. Public Health Service Syphilis Study at Tuskegee Group decided to build on the Oslo work and perform a prospective study to complement it. The U.S. Public Health Service syphilis study at Tuskegee began as a six-month descriptive epidemiological study of the range of pathology associated with syphilis in the population of Macon County. The researchers involved with the study reasoned that they were not harming the men involved in the study under the presumption that they were unlikely to ever receive treatment. At that time, it was believed that the effects of syphilis depends on the race of those affected. Physicians believe that syphilis had a more pronounced effect on African Americans' cardiovascular systems than on their central nervous system. Investigators enrolled in the study a total of 600 impoverished African American sharecroppers. Of these men, 399 had latent syphilis with a control group of 201 men who were not infected. As an incentive for participation in the study, the men were promised free medical care, but were deceived by the PHS, who never informed subjects of their diagnosis 
despite the risk of infecting others and the fact that the disease could lead to blindness, deafness, mental illness, heart disease, bone deterioration, the collapse of the central nervous system, and death. Instead, the men were told that they were being treated for bad blood, a colloquialism that described various conditions such as syphilis, anemia, and fatigue. The collection of illness, the term included, was a leading cause of death within the Southern African American community. By the end of the study in 1972, only 74 of the test subjects were still alive. Of the original 399 men, 28 had died of syphilis, 100 died of related complications, 40 of their wives had been infected, and 19 of their children were born with congenital syphilis. The revelation in 1972 of study failures by whistleblower Peter Buxton led to major changes in U.S. law and regulation concerning the protection of participants in clinical studies. Studies now require informed consent, communication of diagnosis, and accurate reporting of test results. So there you have it, a little bit of history on the Tuskegee study or Tuskegee experiment. Be well, stay safe, and stay in peace, not pieces. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you will know every time I upload a video. Word of the year, peace. Peace. Deuces. See you soon. Love y'all, fam.